Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to VSC Season 3. Today's webinar will be focused on videography. If you guys are new to our program, Virtual Student Experiences, or VSC, is a pro bono initiative spearheaded for students by students. And we at Virtual Student Experiences want to be the inspiration for aspiration. Our goal is to give students around the world an opportunity to hear from professionals in their career industry of interest in a friendly and casual setting. And if you're a student that knows what you want to do in the future, we at VSC want to encourage, allow, and connect these professionals. Through VSC, students are given the chance to decide if their career choice fits their personality, skills, and overall interests. Through VSC, you guys will be able to hear from a wide variety of guests from a wide variety of seniority levels. And to find out, to be, to find out more information and to sign up to be notified about other webinars, you can visit our website at www.virtualstudentexperiences.com. But before we get started, I just want to let you all know how this is going to work. So firstly, I'm going to be asking our guest professional that I'll introduce in a second, a series of base knowledge questions so that you can get a good idea of who he is and what he does. And just real quickly, introducing our VAC core team of volunteers, we have Becky, Gabby, Jonathan, Coco, Tommy, and Audrey. Without further ado, our very special guest for today is Mr. Jaden Osborne. Mr. Jaden Osborne is a video producer, videographer, and editor with a demonstrated in history of, in history of working in the media production industry. With experience in digital marketing, leadership, B2B sales, performing arts, and project management, his skills range from teach, team management all the way to cl creative collaboration. And after graduating from the University of Arizona, Mr. Osborne has worked in, founded, and taken leadership roles at multiple companies where his skill sets in videography and business have come into play. We're very honored to have you with us here today. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Osborne. Thank you. Thank you. Well, how can I help you guys? What, 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 what do you want to know about? So just to start, I guess, can you tell me from your perspective what videography is and how you got into that field? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, to start it off, it comes down to the direction that you choose. And so um, I was fortunate enough to know at a young age that I wanted to go into video. And the reason I decided to go into video was simply because it's fun and I want to have fun in life. And um, I didn't really think about the money. And, you know, it happened to work out given that, you know, as this coronavirus and the digital world is kind of emerging, um, video is needed for everything. Everything needs video. So it actually turned out to be a good industry to get into. Um, but I chose to get into it purely just because I enjoyed it. And um, that's something that I totally support, which is, you know, if, if your work is what 90% of what you do or 80% of your life is your work, you better somewhat enjoy it. So, um, yeah, that's how I got started into it. And then I've been doing videos since I was a little kid. And then I just climbed up the ranks, got a, got a job um, as a videographer, and I started doing concerts. And I started filming, like, the first concert I ever filmed was uh, Matchbox 20. And, you know, right there by the sound booth, just kind of tracking them back and forth. But it's a really cool, it's a really cool industry. Awesome. And then I guess, can you tell us where your passion for videography and business really began? Yes. So I think the passion emerged from the enjoyment from doing it, right? I liked, I liked the story behind it. I liked being able to deliver a message to an audience. And that's the big thing with, with video is that you have it's a magic it's a magic power like you have music you have video which is like photos it's a bunch of still photos um so you're combining multiple different art forms into one so it's a very powerful form of communication you can get people to feel inspired with the music you choose you can get them captivated by the shots that you choose to include and then you have a, a story for them to emotionally relate with so um i think the passion just comes from the power of it that's really great. And I guess when you were trying to break into the industry, were there any steps that you had to take or any requirements that you had to meet? Breaking in? Yeah, so I think for anybody interested in getting into the video production industry, experience is everything. It doesn't, you don't need a degree. Like I didn't have to go to college. I could have just jumped right into it because at the end of the day, what people care about is can you do the job and do I like working with you? Mm -hmm. So I would recommend honing in on your craft. Say you want to be a director or you want to be a cinematographer, um, start learning that stuff now. Nothing is stopping, stopping you from learning it. You can go on YouTube. I think, you know, I paid $500 
for an A to Z course, everything you need to know um, about video. And so there's, there's many resources online and you can spend a little bit more time and do it for free, or you can invest and get a course. But I would say, I would suggest to just, yeah, like you said, like I said, just hone in on your craft. So if you want to be an editor, start editing, start to go out there, shoot some stuff or get some free stock footage online and start editing together some stuff with music. Yeah, yeah that's really awesome. And then the I guess the reason I say that is because if you, if deep down, yeah. go ahead, sorry, you cut oh, off. No, 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 please continue. Yeah. So if you, if you know how to do it deep down and you feel secure in that, then you're going to come across confident when you're speaking to the person interested. Yeah, I've done X, Y, and Z before, and I can tell you in an interview without batting an eye that I can do it. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people come to is you're trying to break into the industry, but you have no experience. So even if you do get that, that interview, you're going to be saying, oh, I, I, I think I can do this, or I, I feel confident I can do this, but you've never done it before. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say just get out there and get experiences. Offer to work for free for the, you know, my entire college experience. Everybody's working for free. That's what you do. You start off by getting the experience. So that would be the big suggestion I would make. Awesome. And then I guess focusing in on your, your education in college, can you speak to maybe the role of that your education played in your success and how important it is to go to a name school or get really good grades? Yes. Um, okay, so name school grades and the importance of college overall. So the name school, I don't think that matters, at least in the video industry. It doesn't matter at all. If you go to a name school, it matters what your experience is. Um, but with the name school, you could get better connections. That's one of the best things of college. So say you decide to invest all this money or your parents invest all this money to go to a name school, you better be networking a lot because that's half of the value of college. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the big, one of the biggest takeaways of college is realizing that you're paying for the network that you're going to get. And if you don't get out there and meet people and get the numbers in your phone and get the email addresses and get the phone numbers, you're going to graduate college and be like, what? I don't even remember a quarter of my classes. Why? Like you're going to be all frazzled. So you need to make sure you take something away from it. So that last senior year, I was, I was going hard on networking. I created an Excel sheet and I was anybody in my classes. These, these people can be resources down the future. Uh, the other, the other suggestion I would make is, good grades in regards to good grades. I mean, you, you got to pass, right? You got to get your degree. So you don't want to get bad enough grades to where you're having to retake classes and you're extending on your college degree. Uh, that's wasting money and time and time is everything, but you don't necessarily have to get a 4.0, especially with the video industry, because they're not looking at your grades. They're looking at, can you do the craft? Um, but what I do think about getting good grades, what the good side of it is, your own personal standard. So I got pretty good grades. I graduated with a 3.4 GPA. So it's not, not a 4.0, but um, I did push myself to a higher standard. I made sure that I at least got that 3.0 because that was my standard. Um, so I would say it, it, it's, it reflects, your grades reflect your own personal standards. So that's, that's that aspect. And then in regards to college overall, I would just say that it was worth it, but it's not worth it in the way you would expect because you don't remember everything. You don't remember all your classes. And at the end of it, you're looking back and you're reflecting on the times you had, but also um, what did I learn and who am I now versus who was I when I started? And I think that's the biggest thing is that if say you learn nothing in your classes, but you went to another area, you moved away from your hometown and you put yourself in uncomfortable positions. You meet new people, you network a little bit, maybe you join a club. Um, I, my freshman year, I didn't do any of that. I didn't, I didn't start joining clubs until my junior year, which I'm very glad I did. Join the sales club, join the, like you gotta join the clubs cause you're gonna meet more people and you're gonna get more out of it. But um, yeah, I would just say overall, it's what the transformation that happens and, you know, same thing, it goes back to what you put in. So because I decided to start networking and going into the clubs, I got more out of it. You don't, you can't expect it all just to happen to you. But with college, 
who I was before I went to college and who I am afterward is mainly because of the experiences I went through, not what I learned. And so it's the transformation that I went through being uncomfortable and having to figure out like, how do I manage this? How do I, how do I figure out how to take care of all this stress? And I have 10 assignments due in the next few weeks. And I have this person calling me and I need to, I've produced a film. So I have to call 50 restaurants and try to get like free food for our set. Um, there's just so many little things that you can get yourself involved in. And that experience of doing those things is what gets you to the point to be able to be in the real world. You have to get the experience and that's what college gives you the opportunity to do. Awesome. And I guess looking at overall throughout your college experience, can you speak to some of the most important lessons that you took away from your education that have most helped you in your career? Lessons that I've taken from my education? Mm -hmm from actual classes or the education system? Um, I guess from when you were in college, uh, did you learn anything from a teacher? Did you learn anything from any of your peer classmates? Um, what were the, in general, most important lessons that you still keep with you and yeah. use today? I would say one of them is vocabulary and, um, and being able to clearly articulate complex ideas that, and that, that comes within the first one to two years of college when you have to start writing. But I took this class uh, called FTV 200 and it was Introduction to Film Aesthetics. And it was taught by Michael Mulcahy. He was actually in my music video that I produced. Um, he was an awesome professor, definitely one of the fa my favorites. And he, um, he taught me how to have a bigger vocabulary, but also how to identify, like we're, we're an analyzing a film and we can really break down the, the contrast of the lighting and the shadows and really just diving deep into something and you find out there's so much more there than what you thought and then being able to take all those details and then put it into words. That is a very useful skill because now with that skill, I can, I can take a complex problem, say like a client's business or their marketing endeavors and I can break it down and say, hey, here's all the little things that I'm going to address as a consultant for you. Um, so being able to communicate professionally, I think that's huge. And um, in addition to the actual coursework, um, I minored in psychology. And so I think the psychology helps me every day. I, I know how people, in, in regards to making relationships with people, people want to work with people they like. So I know that if I'm trying to get a job or get a gig, I want to be very personable and charismatic and understand them. And that comes from the psychology and judgment and decision making, you know, uh, the, you know, the first impression bias and how you know, we it's called the anchor and adjustment heuristic. We anchor on a piece of information and then we adjust accordingly. Knowing those background things of how uh, people work is definitely useful. So like communications, psychology, those are good um, minors, in my opinion, just to make you all well rounded as an individual. Hmm, awesome. And then I guess um, focusing on a blend of experience and education, can you tell, talk about some of the things that you did in college that helped to prepare you for your first few jobs? Yes. So I keep looping back to that experience is key, right? Mm -hmm. And so in college, right around junior year, I'm like, okay, it's about time to get an internship. I procrastinated it. I'm king of procrastination. I understand all you guys, like I'm wait to the last second and that that's how you got to do it. Right. Um, with college, I think that it almost trains you to procrastinate because you don't want to do the work. You don't want to do the assignment. Most of the time, most kids don't want to do the work. And so that's very risky coming out of college, being trained to procrastinate everything. I would say 75% of people are like that. And then you go into this real world and then that's the approach you take to everything. I procrastinate, you know, and then you have to put the pressure. So you have to learn how to put the pressure on yourself. That's one of the biggest things because you could have, you have to create your own deadlines after college. That's what I just did on my calendar because I have, um, I have another exam. I'm going to get my life insurance license. And so 
I had to treat that like it's college. And so I, but this time I'm not going to cram and I'm not, I can't because I probably will fail. This is a big test. This is a real world thing. So I need to plan weeks in advance and use my strategic planning skills that I've learned and actually apply that to something real in my life. So those are the things you start to you start to use. Oh, how do I find a job after college? You need to create a spreadsheet and you need to track all these opportunities and you need to track, did I apply for this one? Yes, all right, here's the website link. Have, who's the person in contact? What's their info, information? So you, you gotta learn how to be a little bit more analytical and deal with more details as you graduate. Um, and then the, the thing got me where I am in experience is internships. You have to get an internship or an externship. Um, otherwise, you're going to be below the competition. You're going to graduate. And if you don't have a good, I have, I did three internships and you can do that. You can break it up into one credit each and do just a month here or a month there. And that's what I ended up doing. I, I had an internship at a film company and I was just editing their videos for them for free. So I got some editing experience, but I was doing free work for them. They're making money off of it and it was boring work. So I got a different internship and I went to uh, a real estate company and I started to help them with like their social media. And so that was just a good experience to have on my resume. And then I um, got another internship at Access Tucson and I was trying to find internships. I was trying, this is a really good story. Let me hurry and tell you this. And this is probably one of the best stories I can tell you about my college career. So this has a big learning experience. So it's junior year. I need to get an internship. Mm -hmm. And there is the office in the, in like in your school, in your particular college, they will have somebody maybe sending you internship opportunities. There might be a person designated for that. Um, I was getting emails from this lady just throwing out internship opportunities. I'm like, okay, when something just falls in your lap and you don't take action, that's, it's very, uh, you could miss out on a lot. And so I, I was just looking through my email one day. I saw an opportunity. Hey, all you have to do is apply here, put in your resume. It took me five, 10 minutes. And because I decided to do that right then, it's called the two minute rule. If you can do it, if you can do it in less than two minutes, do it now. Um, but that obviously didn't apply because it took five to 10, but I did it. I applied, I got the interview and I went to the interview a few days later is in downtown Tucson. It was called the downtown Tucson partnership. I went to the interview. I thought I killed it. I thought I did so good. I brought my computer. I was all showing them my examples of my work. And I'm like, I can help you guys do all this stuff. And I thought I was going to get the gig. And they called me and they said, you know what? We found someone else with that, with better experience that, um, and better skills that can fill this role. But I do know someone over at Access Tucson. They, they might really like you. So they connected me with Access Tucson. I go over to Access Tucson, talk to the guy. He says, hey, yeah, just make me a video. I go on campus or something, make me a video. I'm like, okay. So I go on campus and I do just a campus overview. You can find it on YouTube. You can say University of Arizona campus, Jaden Osborne. You can find the video I made. And I just took the camera out, did some pans of the, of the campus, went, you know, talked about this is this area and put it all together. And I actually was on my skateboard and I was longboarding around and getting cool shots, put it all together. They were really impressed. They hired me on as a production assistant because Access Tucson is paired with Southern Arizona Video Productions, which I didn't know. And Access Tucson is like free television and Southern Arizona is an actual production company that produces the concert videos for Ava Amphitheater out at Casino del Sol. And so I just got hired on as a production assistant without even really trying uh, because I did good work. And then next thing I know, I'm a videographer for, for Motley Crue and Rick Spring, or not Rick Springfield, but I've, I've filmed Rob Zombie, Motley Crue, uh, Matchbox 20, Sugar Ray. I filmed all these people and that just came from me replying to an email and setting up an interview for a different job. It wasn't even the same job and I got this job. So that's the big thing that I, the learning experience that I came from that was that you just gotta take action on the opportunities in front of you because there are opportunities all around. And when you take action on it, it may not even be the same thing that you think it's gonna lead to, but it's gonna lead to even something better. So you guys have to keep moving forward. And when, when that email comes through, don't be like, I'll do it later, just get it done right now. And then um, you can find yourself some really good opportunities. Yep, for sure. Got to use that, that two-minute rule. 
Yep. And then I guess focusing more on your experiences, can you speak a little bit about your time at the Engine Institute of Music and Performing Arts and then your role at the Skyline Productions? Yes. So, uh, you know, post-graduation, I had to get a job, right? So I start applying and I look on Google and I say video production. And then I get a, get together a list of 10 to 12 of my top ones. And I, and I rated them based on Google ratings. What, this one had 92 Google ratings. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that one first. Here's, here's what I did and it worked out. And th- I'm just gonna share this with you guys because it, you know if you're graduating or you just post-graduated, get together a list of all the opportunities and all the places you might want to apply. Then create a resume package. If, if they're local, this works so well. I mean, I know Corona happened and we can't, it's social distancing and all that. But um, what I did is I put together resume packages in a manila folder, printed off my resume, my cover letter, and I changed each cover letter for that specific position and that company. And then I printed off my diploma, printed off any, any in, you, know, you know, there's like, some colleges have little certifications you can get. So I got like a leadership endorsement. It, you know, it's just something extra and just watch your emails, get those endorsements, get those little things because they help. And so I got a leadership endorsement. I got a certificate of um, collaborate. I don't know. I got a bunch of things. And so then um, I put those all together in separate packages. And then I created a Google route all day. And I just hit every single place and dropped it off around town. And I ended up getting Skyline Productions. I was a videographer for them. They do live TV. And so I was actually... Uh, they broadcast the Catholic mass every Sunday. And so I was a camera operator for that. Um, that came from just me deciding to like, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to go bring my resume to these places because I was calling, I was on ZipRecruiter, I was on Indeed and I was putting in the applications and saying, Hey, did you guys get it? Did you guys get it? And it came to a point where I was like, enough is enough. I'm going out there. And that's what actually got me the jobs. So I got Skyline Productions and then I did um, Eyes Across the Sky and Primus Visuals. Um, those are both I'm lead roles and those I'm like running the company now um, for a, the Anderson Institute of Music. I started that when I was actually in high school and I was assistant for like video stuff, but I was also a student there. And so I was fortunate enough to be able to perform. Um, I opened up for Rick Springfield. I opened up for Andy Grammer. I got to do these um, little shows before the main artist came on because I'm a musician myself. And so that was a really good opportunity for me. And then I got, I just helped, helped him, the owner with any video stuff he needed. That's really awesome. And then um, I guess now this coronavirus obviously has had its own impacts, um, but can you talk about the impact that it's had uh, on your business and how it, as a CEO, things have ch- changed in your mind? Yes. I'm the key is adaption or adaptation, not adaption. Um, and so you have to be able to identify what are the opportunities in front of you because some opportunities go away and none of them last forever. So we were in a solid thing. We we're doing event photography. We we're doing event highlight videos. And then coronavirus came and wiped those things off of our list. We no longer can do event anything um, unless there's the opportunity virtual. Okay, virtual is coming in. We're not really involved in that, but we can we can figure it out. We can learn. So let's start learning now. And since then, we we did a virtual graduation um, for a whole district mm. in in um, California, the San Lorenzo Unified High School District. We did a, their virtual graduations for seven schools. And that was um, that was one of the big virtual graduation things that we or virtual things that we got started with. And then since then, we're doing weddings, we're, we're live streaming things. So I would say, you know, adapting, but also, you know, adapting in how you're networking and how you're contacting people. A lot of people aren't really um, doing, you know, in person things anymore. So you say, hey, can we set up a Zoom meeting? You know, you just start to use the tools that are being used now and you just have to make sure you change because if you don't change, you're going to get left in the dust. Yeah, really awesome. And then I guess focusing on the, um, the skills that you use every day, can you talk about maybe uh, the top three most important, most useful skills that you use in your job every day? Yeah, so um, useful skills that I use every day, I would say professional communication is number one. 
You have to know how to speak and write emails like a professional. And, you know, that means capitalizing the first letter of certain words and putting periods and commas where they should be. And, um, you know, being able to lay out information so they can clearly see it. So bullet points when it's necessary. And um, then also, you know, professional, you, you say, you know, hi or hello, Michael, uh, just wanted to reach out to you to check in, see how things are going. I, you know, you have to have the little thing in the beginning and the little thing in the end. Hope you hope you're doing well. I wish you all the best. Take like you have those little conversational things. Um, other than that, you're still there, right? I saw a little yeah, bit of a lag. Yeah. Cool. So other than that, you, the skills are also being able to manage yourself. So in, in school, you have to put on your calendar, I have a test this day, I have to study this day, I have this assignment due this day. That, now you have to do that for yourself. And that's, that's more so if you're an entrepreneur and you have to really motivate yourself, which is in the video industry, you tend to be like a contractor, you tend to be a freelance person, uh, like, a, like an independent contractor. So that requires you to motivate yourself. You have to, it's up to you if you get the stuff done. So that's one big warning I would say to anybody that is looking to get into the video industry is you have to decide and you, you can and first realize that your plan can change. That's okay. You can have a plan and then it probably 100% will change, but it's the fact that you have a plan and you know where you're going. That's what people don't understand is you have to pick a direction. So if you're, if you don't know where you're going and you don't have some goals for yourself, you're just going to be doing figure eights and yeah. you're not going to get anywhere. So you have to make sure, okay, uh, to start off, I'm going to join the production house and I'm going to do editing and I may not love it, but it's going to be the first step. So I would say, yeah, if you, you just have to be able to manage yourself and understand yourself. And before you really jump into it, be aware like hey this is going to require a lot of personal work for me and i'm going to have to be getting better every day am i ready to do this or am i willing to do this am i committed to do this mm -hmm. and um yeah awesome and then i guess um for students that are developing and interested in getting into the videography um, and business spaces what are what do you feel are the most important skills for them to start to develop at a young age video editing is like one of the skills you can have to never grow never go broke there you will always there always will be videos needed to be edited so video editing is like a great staple skill you can do it it's going to be useful for your own stuff so you need to do an ad five years in the future you need to create your own ad or whatever it's just really good for you to have that skill um i would also say be able to use a camera you know know a camera you don't have to be a an amazing person on a camera but at least like know how to use it you know how to press record know how to change the shutter speed the aperture you know and i can do a workshop on that if you guys want more information on that but know the basics of a camera know the basics of editing and then also um i would say know how to talk with a client you know because the client doesn't always know the video stuff and they know what they want they think they know what they want but sometimes you have to let them know hey that idea we could do it but it's not going to present the brand that you want the way you want it to present it because we want to present it prestigious and this is not that good of footage. So sometimes you have to have those conversations. So to be able to feel comfortable in your own opinion, you have to have some not prior knowledge. So just brush up on, um, on the basics of everything. And then you just start getting experience and learn, get a mentor, get a mentor. That's what another thing I would say is you have to have somebody who's already done it and is doing it currently and don't follow every step from them because they're not doing it the right way. They're doing it their way. So there is no right or wrong way, but you can learn things from everybody, even if they are doing it the wrong way. And so I would say, always be learning. So what can I learn from this situation? What can I take away from this experience? And how can I learn from this person who is a few years ahead of me or more? Yeah, for sure. I mean, mentors are extremely important, but from, from your end, I guess, how do students find good mentors? You have to put in some work. You can't just expect people to want to give you stuff for free. Mm -hmm. Why would people just give you stuff for free? And by give you stuff, I mean knowledge. That's their time. If you're asking them questions, they are taking their own time, which is valuable minutes of their life, which they have a limited supply. And so you have to be able to have enough respect for people's time 
because that is valuable minutes of their life. And you have to understand that. And so that with getting a, with getting a mentor or getting somebody to help you, you have to show that you've done some work first. You can't just say, Hey, I'm at square one. I know nothing. Can you tell me everything, you know, Mm -hmm. that is not what you do. You can say, hi, I don't really know much. I've researched it online. I'm trying to figure this, this, and this out. Do you know about shutter speed? Would you mind telling me it? Like, I'm trying to figure out why this is this way. And then you say, hey, I'm also willing, if you ever need any help, I'm totally willing to come and uh, help you clean up or help you, you know, just like offer, you have to give in order to get. So mm-hmm. offer to do something for the mentor. Uh, for example, like one of my professors, I helped him, um, I helped him build something like he was building something for a music video set he was going to do. And so I helped him build a stage and that was just me helping. But then he, he was in my music video. And so he used his time to be in my video. It's just all give and take. So if you have a ment, if you have somebody who you think could be a potential mentor to you, you say, Hey, I'm really interested in where and what you're doing. And I want to learn more. And I'm currently doing this to learn. So don't just say you're not learning, like you need to be currently trying to learn. And then you say, can we work something out? Can I help you do something in in exchange for, you know, just answering some questions or you set up, can we do just a 10, 15 minute call? And can I just pick your brain? A lot of people are interested in that. And so that's how the, the mentors come about is like, you have to build the relationship. You can't just say, Hey, can you be my mentor? Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like though, because that's what I thought. Like, okay, I understand I need a mentor. How do I get the mentor? Yeah. You know, how do you get the mentor? And all it starts with is one conversation and you just say hello and you say, I really like how you did this and I'd love to learn more. Can I help you in any way? And then that grows. Then you have to keep putting that in and say, Hey, how's it going? Check in with them. Then over the course of a year, your relationship will form and then they'll be your mentor. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That definitely makes sense. Um, and then just second to last question before we close up, uh, yeah. do you have any suggestions or words of wisdom for students that are uh, aspiring videographers and business people? Yeah. So there's different, there's different, and I'm not like, I'm just a few years ahead of you guys, you know? So I'm not, I think being humble is a big thing. You have to remember that you're still learning. Even when you're 50 years old, you're still learning and you're trying to figure it out. Um, Getting into this industry, you have to be ready for rough choppy waters because it's changing all the time. And you have to be ready to adapt. And you have to be able to also be ready to continuously work on yourself and develop your skills because if you stop If you peak at college, then, and everybody else that didn't go to college is still learning and getting better at their craft, then you're going to have all these elite skill level professionals and you have a degree down here. Mm -hmm. And so in the industry, what you can do and who you know is what far outweighed from your degree. So you have to always be learning and continuing and developing yourself. Um, And then just being in business in general, you know, start to just don't overwhelm yourself because everybody is on their own timeline. And if you see, you know, you guys both graduated at the same time, but your friend got this gig and they're killing it Mm -hmm. and you're still trying to find a job. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't look on social media and see how, Oh, all these people in your class are doing so well. And you're, because then that does nothing for you besides paralyze you because now you're feeling bad and that's not motivating. That's not a motivating feeling at all. And so you have to realize that you're on your own timeline and you shouldn't be comparing yourself with other people's timelines because they're on their own timeline too. And it will happen when it should happen as long as you're taking the steps to go there. So you have to be doing things. You have to be learning and taking steps forward, but you will figure it out if you keep doing that. Just don't stop. That's what people, that's what gets people to stop. Or that's what stops people from achieving their dreams is because they stop. They stop going towards it. Awesome. And then just finally, just to close us off, do you have any um, suggestions as to clubs or courses that shoot students should uh, participate while in school? And then what is the uh, typical path that a successful videographer uh, takes? Yeah. So the typical path 
and this is changing fast. The typical path you would go to LA or you go to New York and you, you know, start by being someone's coffee man or you, and that's what they would tell me in college. And I, and I agree, you have to be willing to do the low tasks. You have to start from the bottom, but you don't, that's the thing. You don't have to start from the bottom. And that's where I've learned. It, that's what they tell you. They tell you that when you go to LA, you're going to be running coffee. You're going to be doing X, Y, and Z, and it's not going to be fun for a little bit, but I think there's another way. And I think that way is entrepreneurship. And we have more of an opportunity in the history of old with the internet to make money online and to develop, to develop your own business. Mm -hmm. The biggest opportunity in the history of the world, like never before unprecedented opportunities right now, guys. So get, learn, learn how to start an e-commerce business or do so, like, there's so much information online and we, you know, there's more millionaires every day than, than there were, you know, even 10 years ago. So um, I would say like, you have to be able to, like, if you really want to get into Hollywood and you want to go work on Hollywood films, then get out there and go do it and go start getting on people's sets. You just have to get on sets for free, offer to do stuff for free. Um, you start building connections and it's the network. The network is what gets you the job. So and then next time that person really liked working with you, they liked who you are, you were outgoing. Even if you are an introverted person, push through that and say, hi, how is you doing today? Like you have to push it. Um, and then, then they'll call you and say, hey, I'm working on Men in Black 3. You want to come and do the sound. And that's how you get into it is it's all personal stuff. So you have to get out there. Uh, the other way is, you know, you form your own business. And then you step out there and you jump the ladder. So instead of starting at the bottom, you come up. And so that's what my plan is. I'm going to start my own business here in Arizona and build it up over the next few years. I'm, I mean, I've already started it, but um, I'm going to do more of a consulting route. And then I can go to LA with much more experience, much more knowledge and much more confidence mm -hmm. rather than being the coffee guy. I jump in and, and jump the ladder. So that's, you know, there's multiple ways to do anything. And um, that's what I would recommend is figuring out your, you know, having some self-awareness and understanding what kind of person am I, what's going to make me happy, what do I like to do, and then picking out your job based on what you like to do. And uh, then you'll figure out your path from there. But if anybody has any questions or needs help with, you know, setting up those goals or creating that, that plan or that strategy, uh, that's what I do. And that's what I love to do. And I have a, pro I have a program for it. And um, yeah, just let me know and I can always help. Yeah, thank you so much. And I mean, I just want to thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day to come and talk with us here with our students. And then, um, unfortunately, we couldn't have many students here today because uh, last minute, but the students that will view the recording later, I'm sure they'll be able to really benefit from what you've been able to share with us here today in terms of your knowledge, tips, and your experiences um, and all of your really, really great advice. So I really, really thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, just go to jadenosborne.com and uh, you should be able to find some information on how I, you can contact me or anything like that. Yeah, so, I mean, thank you so much again and uh, have a nice rest of your day.